Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Computer Wednesday, we're going to talk about silicon photonics. So let's dive right into it. Now what exactly is the problem that we need something as complex as silicon photonics? Well, reality is that we are building way too many of hyperscalers. What are hyperscalers? Hyperscaler is a sort of virtual world which uh, you can rent basically and they can give you whatever you desire, meaning how much compute horsepower you need, they're like, we got you. How much memory you need, we got you. How much networking bandwidth you need, we got you. Storage, we got you. Meaning, uh, they basically they scale things up to uh, match the demand of the customer. For example, let's say Netflix uh, is, you know, working, everything is fine, they are on Amazon Web Services, everything is awesome, but like they randomly had one TV show that became the next big hit thing, and they are randomly realizing, hey, we do not actually have enough throughput to, you know, keep uh, pumping this thing out. They're like, they're gonna make a phone call, and AWS is like, chill, bro. They're gonna talk to their networking guys, like, okay, fam, increase the knob, voila your GPS could go from like 10 to 500. Uh, like they can scale up drastically and it's kind of freaky. It's like how much scaling things can do. Like think of it this way, like they, can, they allow you RAM as an option. It's like, how much memory do you need? Like now, does that matter? Yes, for example, if you are crunching weather simulation data, uh, your memory, memory is like, you don't need networking too much, but you need memory a lot. And then in some scenarios, let's say you are running some sort of uh, encryption systems, compute is far more important than memory. So that's the whole point of it. They are uh, basically these companies uh, like Amazon Web Services, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, and all Tom, Dick, and Harry, uh, they're building as big of a system as they can build. Like, these things are so top secret, like, good luck finding actual photos of them. Like, again, you, it's not that you cannot find it, it's just that very rare. And uh, they are like huge, like, idiotically huge. They make Amazon warehouse look small, like, that, they are huge, meaning football field size, meaning uh, good luck trying to send copper connection from one to another, meaning they exceed Ethernet range. So they're huge and uh, data traveling inside them because you have to understand, you are literally splitting a computer apart. So data traveling inside is exponentially larger than you would think. Like you can literally take one of Amazon Web Services like large, uh, you know, hyperscalers and they're like, bro, the data that we move inside us exceeds entirety of the planet Earth. That's how much data they are consuming. And like, again, it's a common thing uh, when you look into your computer, you may be like, where is the majority of data coming from? You may think internet, if you have fiber internet, but here's the what will happen if you directly try to study the data that is going between your processor and RAM? At that point in time, you will realize, whoa, that bandwidth is too high. And then you will also understand why the heck we have GPS connections from uh, CPU to GPUs. Uh, that bandwidth is very fat. And you are, that's what these companies are doing. They have like a whole rack. All their rack has contained is just GPUs. All this rack has is networking. All this rack has is storage. So you can imagine like that's literally splitting all those things apart. So data throughput that they are going from one to another, as in like inside one rack to another rack is exponential, like a lot. Like it's crazy stupid uh, what kind of bandwidth they are dealing with. So we do have these te technology, it do exist, Netflix does exist. So what are the current solution for this? Current solution is basically you put racks with more racks, with even more racks, as much racks you can put with the best fiber technology you can have. Now at this point in time, that simply means from your blade side of thing, basically the server blades that you have, that's not that difficult. You can just put one card that has QSF switch into it. That's not big of a deal. However, problem comes when you go to the switch end, not on the uh, producer end, basically the data producer end, the server end, the hardware end, RAM end, those things are not an issue. But problem is the moment you start to compile all of them into one switch, the switch is like, bro, that's a lot of transceivers and fibers. Like, huge amount of things happen. At that point in time, the heat generation from these things become an issue, meaning you could literally have switches, network switches, that are consuming kilowatts of power. Not one kilowatt, kilowatts of power. And be mindful, yes, some energy is being transmitted away using photons, but overall, still a giant as heater in one U rack slot, uh, like a, around one to two kilowatt of waste heat. That's a lot. So that creates a very serious issue. And we are reaching a point where throughput is almost maxed out. Meaning if you go to a company it's like, bro, we want 10 GBPS, they're like, I got you. 100 GBPS, I'm pu pushing it, but you can do it. The moment you go to them and it's like, same vendor, it's like, I want 100 GBPS, like, I got you. I want 100 GBPS and 50 switches in one U unit, it's like, whoa, apply some brakes. 
what about 200 gps again you can do it it's just like the moment you need the density and again these scalars need to be dense otherwise they will simply not work because physics has latency latency do not like to travel far away so for that reason again you cannot have like oh we're giving you the best badass perform uh, you know processors but the moment you call data from ram it's gonna crash the system because latency is too high so you get that point like they need to keep it as tight as high bandwidth as possible so they will try to go to 200 gps at that point in time it simply does not work right? like we are reaching a point where the switches you units are like the limiting factor. Hyperscaler can become even more powerful and there is a demand for it but uh, 100 to 200 GPS is like that's the upper limit. They're like we cannot push this puppy any further. Like they have reached that point and you may be like uh, what are the other things that are limiting? It's PCB because yes, deal. if you have one uh, port that is feeding let's say 200 GPS to one QSFP port that's manageable. Now imagine doing that for 50 or even 20. At that point in time PCB how many layers of PCB you gonna have? Like literally think about it, how many layers, like uh, for, uh, to give you a context, fighter jets could easily have 18 layer PCBs. Imagine how many PCB layers you need. And again, it's a copper. Copper has physical properties, meaning uh, how fast a signal can travel in copper is not that high. It's not photons traveling in fiber. So speed is tangibly slower and it also creates heat. So fundamentally, there is an upper limit, like you are being throttled by copper itself. So PCB is out. You cannot push beyond the PCB. So that's why like many companies are like designing things with like you know extensive heat heat dissipation structure because flat out flat out we are reaching a point where these things are as hot as they can get it uh, we would like to make them hotter but <laughs> uh, we will simply melt them so that's the current barely working like technology is like barely able to hold it together so what was the idea to how do you going to solve it the idea is very simple shrink the distance between chip and fiber because when you are talking about switch what you have is fiber okay awesome light low heat awesome Fi uh, it goes to diode okay no problem diode is converts into a signal awesome and at that point in time the signal goes through a connector that qsfp connector then it goes to another giant pcb then it goes to asic then it has to do a re repeat of this process it has so many steps between just the fiber and asics that are actually gonna do the you know routing and all that jazz it is painful basically uh, if you can shrink that distance basically fiber directly going to asics you can save a lot of power and a lot of heat. Now heat has exponential benefits simply because if you are consuming less power that means your heat load is less meaning your cooling cost goes down. So that's a you know double whammy of profit and then it also allows you to increase density meaning how many racks you can comfortably connect goes up. That means your hyperscaler performance can become better than your competitor meaning shut up and take my money. So idea is you're gonna have ASICs. We have we know how to make ASICs that are capable of handling terabytes per second but here's the deal. Like by the time we have ASICs we put them into uh, you know PCB socket whatever have you and then communicate it to the ports yeah we lose majority of that performance so if we can directly create a fiber interconnect directly making love to uh, your chip itself problem solved so that's the idea of it and you will not be limited by the physics of copper and thermals so you'll be free and this is physics level you cannot bypass it you're like oh we have better engineering dude copper like even if you use gold there there is a limitation of that so you uh, move away from that and faster speed and latency also becomes an option because again less steps equal more efficiency and total parts count meaning how much physical things you will have in your switch basically your switch, switch it will go down drastically meaning same amount of horsepower like around uh, one terabyte per second of data crunching if you take that and compare it to other traditional system it would be like night and day difference the, uh, the you know the amount of parts that they do not have to use and this is just early generation imagine what we'll have in the future it will it will look like a very simple device it's like it will become that good so we're gonna have very less parts high reliability which server companies are just love that and you have to understand you may be like hey a chip cannot have too much power that is true it, it, it will physically melt if you try to pump too many laser diodes around it there is a limitation there but if you have fiber directly coming out of it it's directly coupled to other fiber and you're like hey i'm sending this fiber data to next fiber and that fiber is let's say one more than one kilometer away and the fiber is like bro signal loss is too high here's the deal you do not have to convert that fiber signal to electrical you can optically boost that signal without conversion meaning without adding latency you can literally connect one asic to another asic across the sea without ever changing your photons into electron that's mind-boggling for the amazon is like shut up and take my money just just shut up take my money 
Like I want to connect one Amazon Web Services here, another in India, another in uh, let's say uh, Africa, another in uh, Canada, another in USA, another in France, whatever have you. If all the uh, basically servers can directly talk photon to photon, no conversion of electron, they are like shut up and take my money. That's the whole point of it. It will have drastic uh, you know improvements in speed and latency. Less parts, that's also. Now, e, this is our current structure. We have amazing ASICs, but they are slowed down by uh, basically ports and giant PCBs. Then somebody figured out, it's like, what if we have onboard uh, systems? It's a little step and then the final engine. Chip, fiber, done, go home. This is how the unit will look. So that's the idea behind it. So what about the deployment? Like how it was actually deployed? The idea started as early as 1970 and I was like, damn. And this is one of those things that if you truly dive deep into technologies, you'll always find that it took much longer than you would think. Like you'll think, oh, mobile phone, we just went from like 2G to 3G to 4G to 5G. It's like, nah, bro. The R&D that went behind the scenes that were going on from like 1970s. So that's the whole point. Any technologies that are being worked on right now in the lab will not see it for next 10 to 20 years or even 30 or 50 years. So you have to understand the idea of switching from photons, uh, basically electrons to photons was very long ago. And again, laws of physics made it kind of clear. It's like, dude, sooner or later, we have to jump from electron to photons. And Intel alone has been trying this for 20 years. Like if you are familiar with uh, rumors, news and all that jazz, Intel was trying to make photon using, uh, you know, photon backbone in Thunderbolt. That was the idea behind it. Thunderbolt port supposed to be photon based. They were working on that technology 20 years ago, but that did not pan out. Reliability did not pan out as they wanted it to. So that's why it uh, did not become successful. So the process to get here, basically IC, fiber, making love to each other, that took time. So we started with QSFP port. Basically Intel started to release this. Now you're like, what's the difference between this and another system? Well, this produces exponentially less heat because the IC is like on a fundamental level, the transceiver and uh, basically emitters, like, you know, silicon photon integrated circuit is very efficient. That's the whole point of making higher efficiency. That means Facebook bought millions of these units. Because again, you can put a lot of them, your power draw goes down, your heat output goes down, and they can even, next generations they made, they even made it a bit faster. So this was a starting goal. This is like, okay, the technology, we're gonna put it here, we're gonna test it out, awesome. They tested it out. Then they went to pigtail model, meaning they had the ICs, and then IC had fiber coming out. Now, here's the deal. It works, this was around 2019, and uh, this worked, like you have fiber bundles coming out of it, and you're gonna put that fibers into ports. But here's the issue with that. Pigtails are sensitive. So, that was not a very long-term solution. They, they kind of realized that like, that was a good trial technology, but it was not long-term stable. And nobody kind of was happy with that because again, you have server environment, you could have vibrations, you can have high speed wind, and nobody was like, uh, I'm, I'm actually have to trust a pigtail coming out of a silicon directly. We can't splice into it. We can't do anything to it. So they were like, not that happy. So this happened very recently in 2022. So they are like, okay, we're gonna give final ports into the silicon itself. So the IC, the IC package has physical ports into it directly. You can connect this. Like this may not look a big deal, but you have to understand each of those jacks have eight fibers inside them. Let that sink in. Not one fiber, not two fiber, eight fiber. Each of them. And the fact that these are a port, that means it's a system that can expand into the future. Meaning right now you can have, hey, uh, I don't need that much, but I need a lot of uh, speed. You're like, hey, one silicon, which has only two ports. Good, awesome, go home. And like uh, Amazon will come and say, bro, we need some big boys. Big ass processor with multiple interconnects. So that means a lot. Cooling it is far more efficient. The overall switch power consumption goes down. The speed goes up, latency goes down. Everything is awesome. To achieve that, it's it may look like a little thing, but it's a damn amazing achievement. And I'm like, uh, Corning is the one that is designing the connectors. It's like, how the heck you somehow managed to have eight fibers like interlocking like this? It's like, how? And reliably, it's, so that's the whole point. That this was what they wanted to do with Thunderbolt. It's like, just plug it in. And uh, maybe in the future we'll have uh, like, you know, USB with this, because all you need to add is like plus, and basically you can have a ground and one positive and done. Data will be done through optical. So deployment took time, <laughs> deployment took time. We started very small, brick by brick, from pigtail to jacks, took time. So what we can expect in the future? Well, this is one of those things that may feel small, but it will have a big impact. Like it's gonna have a huge impact. For example, the back in the good old days when we had the technology of boosting fiber signals, we used to do it, take undersea fiber, 
take the, uh, there was converter station, they were going to take the fiber signal, convert it into electricity, re it because that's the only way they could boost the signal and it's like send away. But here's the deal, every time we had to go from photon to electron to photon, we had latency in, in the fiber, undersea fiber itself. But over time, somebody figured, hey, we can create some scenarios where we have something doped. And uh, we, the moment we send the photons through it, that pulse itself gets amplified by the leasing energy and voila, no photon. Like you literally have no latency, it's just like, a very weak photon goes in, huge photon comes out, done, go home. Like, of course, not huge photon as in like high power, for, uh, like more photons comes out on the other end. So that allowed our in undersea fiber to become exponentially far more reliable. And that allowed me, like living in India, living in a very small town, like it does not have any big name attached to it. And somehow I can get 300 Mbps internet connection. And the reason is limited to 300 Mbps. Yes, I'm poor. I cannot afford that 1 Gbps connection. And uh, again, they'll give you 3.2 terabytes. So I don't think I'm gonna need too much of it. So that development that we're gonna go photon to photon boosting, changed a lot. It took time to realize, but it changed a lot. Same thing is happening here. The fact that you can directly have ASICs making love to fiber directly, that may sound a small thing, but overall it's gonna have a huge impact. And I love this company. They are like, dude, the moment we're gonna do that, like ASIC to direct for fiber connections, uh, we're gonna consume power a lot. Like everybody was like, the first thing they're gonna do, hey, what if we can do more of it? So they have figured out, that, like put liquid cooling on it. Don't bitch around, just put liquid cooling done. We know for a fact that the next thing people are like, what if we can do more? It's like, just put liquid cooling there. So that's smart. That's the whole idea of it. these are black jacks and they're gonna have the ASIC and even they are like very clear about it. we do need to cool the uh, you know ASIC itself but it will have very amazing results and it's laying down the foundation of photonics because we are kind of limited in terms of electronics how much we can push the silicon because apparently electrons are wavelength I'm like electrons small photons uh, wavelength, quantum effects and all that. So the, apparently you cannot make electrons too small basically. And we knew this like the moment you start to make uh, silicon gates too small, electron can just jump through it. It's like, you know, lull, quantum tunnel through it. So there is an upper limit. And we kind of reaching a point where we cannot increase the gigahertz too much. You will say that's why like gigahertz has been going up so slowly. Like back in the days we went from megahertz to gigahertz to two gigahertz to three gigahertz very quickly. But after three it's like, 3.5, 3.5 to like 3.75 to 4, to 4.5, to 4.56. It's like very slow. The growth has been slow. And because the power consumption goes exponentially higher with the frequency. So even though FX8350, AMD is a very old process that I have, uh, somebody overclocked this puppy to 8 gigahertz. We still do not have, that's 10 years ago. We still do not have 8 gigahertz normal processor because power consumption is exponentially higher. So we are touching 5 gigahertz. That's mind blowing. But again, the power consumption is stupid. Like stupid, we are reaching a point where they're consuming 300 and 350 watts of power per processor. That's too stupid. So there are some limitation. Photonics solves all that. Photonics is like, hey, what if the power, uh, you know, power, dirty thing, basically the things that are making heat, is not there. There is nothing that is making heat. It's just photons coming in and coming out because it's literally leaving the system. Uh, you're not gonna have any heating issues and the diodes that gonna actually create the heat, uh, you can have cooling units on that. And because majority of the things will be done on photon level, it will be very efficient. And speed, terahertz, not giga, tera. Multiple zeros better. Basically, it would be so fast from a basically self-driving car point of view that it will be from its point of view, the world will be running at 10,000 FPS. They're like car accident will be like, ah, damn, we crashed, man. Okay, study all the wheel vectors. Okay, that crumpled. Okay, that is not crumpled. I think we should release the airlock. What do you think? It's gonna have a discussion on it. So like that's how slow fast it is. The how slow the real world appear it to. So that's an amazing thing. Consequence, it's huge because wavelength of electron does allow you to make silicons very small, uh, but photonics will be large because again, you know, wavelength of infrared, wavelength of even ultraviolet is huge. So there are size limitation of penalty in photonics. And it may even allow, uh, you know, optical comms with USB. That's what I would like to see. And it does have much further reaching implication than we realize. Like the fact that silicon and fiber can come like this, it's far more amazing than you will realize. I guarantee you. And I have linked a lot of video down below to watch and learn about this thing. So this was my presentation on silicon photonics. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike. Press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.